Did Ferrari make a massive mistake sacking Carlos Sainz? Okay, I'll be honest, I was really massively beat off when Ferrari announced they would replace Sainz with Lewis Hamilton. The smooth operator had, in my opinion, done a great job at Ferrari and had matched Charles Leclerc for the most part. Apart from that, Lewis had been rather average in 2022 and 23, and looked well past his sell-by date. Fast forward a couple of months and Hamilton has been as rejuvenated as more than just an ancient artifact, but has Carlos Sainz proven that Ferrari have been a wee bit hasty in discarding him. Only one way to ascertain that in my opinion and that is by having a look at the signs. Bad pun aside, the Mexican GP win still fresh in the mind, the statistics in this case don't lie. And this is how Sainz has managed to give Ferrari something to ponder, with some genuinely impressive performances since getting the sack. Despite whatever big Fred Vasseur says, it's pretty much unanimously accepted that Leclerc is, at least till Hamilton joins, Ferrari's golden boy. So how has Carlos fared against Charlie Legs so far this year? 21 of 24 races have been done and dusted and Sainz has two victories to Leclerc's three. Leclerc has 307 points and lies third in the Drivers' Championship with Carlos on 244 points in fifth, meaning that they've gained Ferrari 557 points and second in the Constructors' title race, only behind McLaren's 593. A legit performance in anyone's book, but how does this translate to Ferrari making a mistake in sacking the man signs? He has been bested by his teammate. But consider this, with signs confirmed at Williams next season, do you think he has the same access to Ferrari tech and development as say Leclerc? Or that he will get the newest parts first? Do you think they'll be share sharing secrets with him? To what purpose would the little horses give signs the same treatment or access to tech or secrets that could be used against them next season? And yet the man has been the perfect professional, despite being, in my opinion, and I think is, unfairly sacked. Let's have a look at his replacements performance thus far. Hamilton has two wins, two teammate Russell's one, and trails Russell by two, something like two points. Not exactly a train smash though, but have a look at their head-to-head -head record. Russell has outraced Lewis 13 times to eight and outsprinted him four times to one. Looking at Leclerc versus Sainz, it's Charles who has outraced Carlos 13 to six and outsprinted him three to two. So how does that mean Ferrari made a mistake sacking Sainz? It comes down to many factors for me, but age is unfortunately a major one, as is mentality. At 30, Carlos Sainz is at his peak. He's a very consistent performer and has done a sterling job in a sometimes not easy to perform at Ferrari team. He's worked brilliantly with Leclerc to have the little horses challenging for the Constructors title at the sharp end of the season. They can actually win Ferrari their first title since the days when Noah was still building himself a big boat with lots of room for animals who don't like to swim. Lewis Hamilton for all his brilliant achievements in the sport, has one, possibly two, big flaws at the moment. Age and mentality. Now how can I challenge the mentality of a seven-time world champion, hundred and something odd race winner? Before you crucify me, please give me a listen. Lewis is 39 and will be 40 when he joins Ferrari. Yes, he has a brilliant record, but there is one thing he's never been able to do successfully, and that is be a good teammate. Yes, when Bottas was submitting, they were great friends and very effective, but what happened when he faced an equal in pace and ability teammate in a battle for the World Drivers' Championship at McLaren and Mercedes? Things got so bitter at McLaren that Alonso and Hamilton actively fought each other so hard they managed to give the title to Kimi and Ferrari in 07, having battled and bruised so many points off each other that the Finn could steal the title right at the death. Things got so toxic Alonso bailed from the team and they still, to this day, carry animosity towards each other. Fast forward a few million years and Rosberg versus Lewis became so bad, they smashed each other off the track in Spain 2016, effectively gifting a young Max Verstappen his first race win. 
Things got so toxic they were having a go at each other, not only on track, but in the interviews as well, and Rosberg bailed as soon as he finally got one over Lewis. At 39 or 40, he's unlikely to be able to get near his peak. Yes, Fangio was 46 when he won his last driver's title, but I'm guessing today's cars may be a bit more strenuous on the human body than they were in the 1950s. Nigel Mansell was 39 years old when he won the 1992 title, but the car was almost as dominant as the 2023 Red Bull, and the same can be said of Prost's title at 38 years old in 1993. Historically, in recent years anyway, it takes an absolutely dominant car to win the title in your late 30s, and the man is joining Ferrari, a, the a team that hasn't built a dominant car in the last 15 odd years. Lewis won't play the good little teammate, and he will battle Leclerc in the paddock as well as on the track, which will definitely lead to tension and probably an on-track altercation or 20. And I'm saying this based on what has happened in the past when Hamilton has faced a teammate driving a title-challenging car. In a not-so-competitive car at McLaren, he was at times outpaced by Jensen Button, and the same thing has happened at times facing his teammate Russell at Mercedes. But when the car is a title challenger, Hamilton unlocks beast mode, and I can only imagine it would be an even higher level if he feels it could be his final chance at winning a driver's title at Ferrari. Sainz has fought for the team despite being treated poorly and has been at worst as much of a team player as Lewis has been at Mercedes. Lewis is a proven politician though and he will not sit idly by if he feels poorly treated as Alonso and Rosberg can testify. Hamilton seems to be chasing his unicorn, breaking Schumi's title record while making the Ferrari team great again and riding off into the sunset, except it doesn't work like that at Ferrari. For all the respect I have for them, this team remains one with a worrying tendency to shoot itself in the foot. Hopefully Ferrari proved me wrong. Lewis acts the perfect gentleman while pushing Leclerc to the World Drivers Championship and retiring with a Constructors title at the old lady. I still think Ferrari may have gone all Daniel Levy on this one though. Remember when he signed Jose Mourinho on reputation alone for Spurs Remembering all the times Jose kicked his butt at, while at Chelsea and acted like a little giddy schoolgirl in the behind the scenes docky, only for Mourinho to do what he does, be off the whole world at Tottenham before Levy sacked him right before the Carabao Cup final, so as to not have to pay Mourinho a win bonus, only for his temporary replacement to go on and lose the final? Sainz never saw himself as Ferrari's number two. But he was, despite some grumblings, very effective at pushing Ferrari to a title challenge. Hamilton is a winner though, an aging winner at that, who sees the sun setting over his career sooner rather than later. Winners want to win, not push a team to win, but win themselves and that is what I mean when I say his mentality can become an issue at Ferrari. I don't think Ferrari can justify asking Leclerc to become number two to Lewis. And Lewis can say what he wants, but he has only gotten along with submissive teammates, which may lead to some exciting racing, but can lead to more heartache for Ferrari fans who already missed out on Adrian Newey and may be missing Carlos Sainz sooner than they thought. So that would mean now that Ferrari are betting everything on an aging Lewis Hamilton, and to go with what I've just said. And with all of that, Ferrari, according to a Crash.net article, are reportedly going to be paying Lewis Hamilton around 100 million US dollars to race for them, including image rights and some sponsorships and bonuses. Take that against the current 12 million dollars Carlos Sainz is being paid. And the question has to be asked, is an aged or aging, depending on whether you're a fan or not, Lewis Hamilton really? $88 million worth more than a prime Carlos Sainz. Look at their performances. I don't think he is. At least Oli Behrman is waiting in the wings, the anointed golden boy to attempt to come in and give the fans something to cheer about, scoring crazy points for us while Ferrari potentially battle themselves. An unpopular opinion most probably, but that's the beauty of social media. 
I can spew my opinion, you can kill me in the comment section and we can all live happily ever after. I do hope I'm wrong though, a strong Ferrari is good for the sport. And on that, it's time for me to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. I'd be much obliged if you would consider subscribing and sharing the content. And keep a lookout, we have new stuff out every week. God bless and goodbye.